सो एलेक्सा टेल मी अबाउट फिजियोलॉजी इन मेडिकल स्कूल Why would medical students study the normal functions of the body? Doctors treat the abnormal stuff. So, according to my friend, the normal functioning of the body is not really important because doctors treat the abnormal pathologies. So, I think for this video, the episode two of the study series, we will look into physiology and why is it so so important. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and back to this. study subject guide playlist kind of thing i am dr subhav ramnani currently an intern doctor in delhi and today we are going to dive into physiology so number 1 what is physiology it is the branch of biology that deals with the complex body functioning you know human body is a very complex working machinery i'm sure you guys already know that if you're medical students because everything is just so difficult so many processes happening and running simultaneously in our body at multiple levels so for example your finger presents like with the paper cut but it stops bleeding automatically after some time right uh, your heart beats on its own how our bodies have you know electric current but we don't get a shock shocking right for example why do we feel dehydrated after eating something salty like popcorn so studying physiology can give you answer to all of these questions physiology can drive the curiosity in you and can help you answer your curious questions of why x y z why does this happen why does that happen everything about your body and you put a question of why physiology is probably the right subject to answer all your questions so studying this subject gives you a glance on the normal functioning of the body at a different level right from the cellular to the organism level so everywhere the normal functioning of the body so students learn about you know normal body functions and everything so why why is it important you know we can just learn about the pathologies and stuff so in today's video i'll be covering everything on why physiology is important but first let me dive into the resources what resources you should rather use to study physiology so personally i used Linda Costanzo's Medical Physiology uh if you're not aware of this book it looks something like this and it's an excellent book it's an it's a really amazing book for two very good reasons it's pretty concise and it has all the high yield information so anything you know for medical exam or entrance exam related uh questions it will be covered there for sure Number 2 it is still broad enough to the right amount that it will clear all your concepts so it does like the best of both worlds so i personally love this resource i found out uh, about it a bit late but when i found out about it the best book and i don't think any any other physiology book where we can read it in a short amount of time and also clear our concepts uh, does better than this but another book uh, you would be aware of is guyton and hall it's a very famous book one of the standard books however i won't recommend this book as a base book but only as a reference book see the information here is very very fast and very time consuming to read so if you're stuck somewhere in a topic and you need a broader clarity then you can refer to guyton yeah for sure but perhaps stick to the more concise and high yield resources and just for clarity go to guyton but according to me the resources are the best resources for physio- physiology are not restricted to just books because physiology is a very descriptive subject a very visual subject and the virtual library of internet is filled with physiology resources so i can tell you a lot of youtube channels actually which are free videos and explain amazing physiology like ninja nerd or like osmosis they have amazing illustrations where me me you know you will just remember their figure where they are explaining and you will remember each and everything uh, pretty accurately so i i love osmosis for that there is dr najib lectures 
these lectures are pretty long uh, and they are dedicated physiology lectures so it may take time to cover them but if you're stuck somewhere i don't think so it's there is a better video resource which provides that much in depth knowledge about one particular topic uh, more video resources i would like to say are physio uh, and dr conrad fisher's uh, lectures on physiology trust me guys if you can find his lectures somewhere just go with it he's an excellent teacher he makes a um, lot of uh, he tells his own anecdotes about his patients he tells a lot of references he makes a lot of jokes and i'm sure physiology is much easier when he's teaching i can just say that other resources are boards and beyonds and your bread and butter in india which we which all indian medical students use prep ladder maro dance bhatia whatever you're comfortable in using and you can use that as a video resource as well so all of these were resources for physiology which you can use so there is ample of resources uh, don't waste your time more in standardized resource just use uh, like the reference resource just use them when you know you stuck somewhere otherwise the video lectures and the high yield concise book will be amazing for physiology so let's come to the learning outcome so what are you expected to learn when you're done with physiology so learning the normal processes in the body uh, catering the curiosity in your mind building a strong base for pathology and you know also anatomy and physiology build a strong base for pathology and if you're stuck with anatomy don't worry i already have a video on anatomy how to study it better and with all the high yield material and resources and you can check it out right here by clicking this link or the link in the description box below it's part of the same playlist but jumping back to physiology so it will also help you build a great base for studying pathology now why let me explain you so physiology is the normal functioning of the body pathology is the abnormal or the pathology in the body so when you know the normal functioning of the body it's easier to understand the pathology of the body and i'll be giving you an example later in this video but for now let's move on to the next topic which is what are the high yield topics in physiology so here's a pick of some high yield topics in physiology which i think they are high yield and they will ultimately be very very helpful when you are studying more subjects more clinical subjects later in your medical school so for example uh, respiratory physiology is one of the most important topics because uh, you know the tidal right from the pathology it can go to your uh, you know icu level knowledge because when you are using uh, let's say when you're working with a ventilator in the icu uh, you need to know the tidal volumes and adjust that accordingly so this physiology knowledge is even helpful there and it's obviously helpful as i said in understanding the pathology uh, which happens in the body so respiratory physiology i feel one of the very important topics there's gi physiology because uh, why is that because like every physiology is important but gi physiology why because most of the cases uh, are of acute abdomen acute abdomen is very very common in the hospitals uh, so if you have a good grasp of physiology uh it will be better to you know help helpful to understand the pathologies and the different differential diagnosis of acute abdomen let's say for example so yeah i feel that is also high yield and you can check out the list here and i'll also link it down in the description box below so what to integrate it with as i already said pathology and pharmacology uh you should integrate physiology with so actually you know in my medical school pathology was always referred to as path physiology so i guess this this is still a term which is used in a lot of medical institutions path physiology so as the name suggests you should integrate it and along with pharmacology so physiology normal functioning of the body pathology abnormal functioning or the pathology in the body and pharmacology to know about the drugs that treat this pathology sorry that treat this pathology to take it back to this normal physiology so it is all um, you know it's all connected normal functioning pathology then the drugs to bring back this to bring this pathology back to the normal functioning so that's how you should integrate 
uh, physiology in your medical school along with other subjects you study so as i said i will be giving you an example for this so like let's say a patient presents with ARDS or let's say you know the patient has a diagnosis of ARDS and he is in front of you to so to understand the proper you know knowledge about ARDS what drugs to give in everything you should know about the most basic physiology of respiratory system let's say the diffusion barrier how the gas exchange works between the alveoli and the blood vessel and that's how you can then take it one step further to understand ARDS what must have happened that it has rescued this you know respiratory distress syndrome in this patient so this is how physiology will be always there when you are a doctor it will always be at the back end of your brain because to understand the pathology you will always need it so it it will keep working in the background the physiology part will keep working in the background of your brain and it will give a clear concept of the presentation the patient has presented with at least that's how i feel so guys that's was it about physiology i think let me know down in the comment section below what you feel about this subject and this video and as always stay healthy stay safe and stay mad but just about medicine